aim of this panel is to engage in conversation with managers, A&R reps, music discovery apps, and journalists to understand how they help create a symbiotic ecosystem for artists to reach their full potential. It doesn't necessarily have a lot of the support structure. Overall, when you're on the internet, you feel that the fucking scene is growing. But at a ground level, it's not growing that much. The roles between booking agents and managers are pretty blurred. Until we have a segregation of specialized jobs where a person is responsible for bookings, is responsible for bookings and not responsible for brand management, for example. Distribution is also key. You need to have your music available to audiences in India. The role of music journalists in scouting nurturing and promoting new artists. Good journalists don't merely report, they identify trends, they project what's you know, going to happen in the future. So that's what we're committed to at Rolling Stone. And I think the role of media in promoting and nurturing artists is really significant, A, for the very simple fact that we put the spotlight on artists. We are mass media, so to speak, so there's more visibility. Second thing I think that uh, magazines like us or music journalists in particular do is situate the artists in a particular trend. This is nurturing of a different kind. And the third role is curatorial. The fact that we are finding stakeholders among artists. Why isn't there music-only venues? It is not sustainable. As a venue, I am supposed to pay an incremental to an artist on his last year fees and my collection at the gate is going down compared to last year, how am I to do that? The sense of entitlement at the gate to be on the guest list is so important. Uh, we do not realize that it really, uh, the venues and the artist managers and the artists themselves, uh, it takes a lot to put everything together. There's a misconception where uh, some, of, some of the independent artists feel that their music will not be heard because they feel that platform is primarily catering to Bollywood music. But the reality is, is that consumption of Bollywood music is high. So you will find people listening to Bollywood music. But it's not true that people are not discovering other forms of music. We're seeding these music into multiple playlists. So we're giving more options to listeners to come hear this song. And yeah, I mean, streaming, I mean, royalties are not too much, but at the end of it, you're still distributing your content everywhere. One of the things that I've always believed in is to sort of build a community around your brand name, like even with an artist, for example, and give back something. Understanding what's the market for each artist, which territory is working for him, what's working for him, understanding that and building on that, not overplaying in a particular city, for example, building your brand in the right way so people really want to watch your show the next time you come. Artists like Pratik Kua then and Parekh and Singh are ensuring that people in India are listening to their music and the, and the moment they do, you will see the turnout, you will see people coming for shows. That Nimuka kind of leads me on to my next point. Where do you draw the line in terms of working with artists and their managers and their agencies and their labels? With Rolling Stone India, the final call resides with the editorial team. There are brands that are extremely hell-bent on plugging, uh, you know, their campaigns and their artists. But at the same time, there are brands that understand that when you do give independence to the journalist, to the editorial team, you gain more credibility. We've gone into this mode of collaborations only. So especially with anti-socials, we are only collaborating. We have a programming team, but the primary job is to collaborate only. Because we have promoters that um, in a way uh, specialize in their particular genres of music. People are already listening to underground music. So it's not like it's not being heard. And the moment a lot of people start listening to it, few other people will start thinking that's commercial. I mean, wasn't hip hop like really underground like two years ago in India? I still think it is. Uh, yeah, like... <laughs> I mean, I think Divine and Nazi now made it like... Now that would become mainstream in one year, for example. So it's like a trend thing, right? I think it's a wait and watch situation. Also, I feel this sort of speculation 
is a little, I don't know, maybe futile right now because it's just so good that we can see such voices, the diverse voices that are coming out. And although these seem like very, you know, very cliche terms, but I think it's a scene that is thriving on diversity. And so what if there's a Gully Boy, you know, the movie that is based on uh, the Bombay hip hop scene is coming out next year. And so what if there's Ranveer Singh, you know, who's in it. And so what is Bollywood that's kind of co-opting the underground hip hop scene. The fact is that there is an acknowledgement of sorts and that's heartwarming. And I think that's something that we really need to build on, that we really need to own, that we really need to claim. And that sort of claiming has happened. It is happening. It will continue to happen, I feel.